Hi everyone, this is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. If you're new here, welcome, and if not, thank you so much for coming back. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn all about how to do the moss stitch. We're not only going to learn how to do the moss stitch, but we're going to learn how to change colors and weave in ends as we go. The only skill you need for this stitch are chaining and single crochet. That's it. So if you can do a foundation chain and can make a single crochet, you can totally do this stitch. Grab your hook. I'm using a five and a half millimeter as well as some acrylic yarn. We're going to begin with the slip knot and make our foundation chain. So take that slip knot, slide on your hook, and pull to tighten. As a refresher, to chain, we'll yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook. And to do moss stitch, you'll just want to make a foundation chain in an even number of chains. So you can make your moss stitch as long or as short as you like, just as long as it's an even number, it will work out. For my sample, I'm going to do 20 chains. Okay, I've got my 20 chains and I'm ready to begin. To start, we're going to work a single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. To single crochet, insert your hook into the chain, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Next, we're going to chain one, skip a chain, and single crochet into the next chain. Chain one, skip a chain, and single crochet into the next chain. And you guessed it, we're gonna chain one, skip a chain, and single crochet into the next chain. We're going to keep repeating this process until we get to the end of the row. Okay, we're almost to the end of the row. I just did a chain one, and now there's two chains left. We're gonna skip a chain and go into the last chain and make our final single crochet of the row. This completes row one. We can now turn our work, and you can go ahead and reorient yourself with your yarn. And now we're ready to begin row two. To start row two, we're gonna begin with a chain two. We're going to place our single crochet stitches into the chain spaces from the previous row. You might need to use your hand to find these spaces a little bit easier while you're learning. We're going to place our first single crochet into the first chain space from the previous row. So once you find that space, it's right there. Single crochet, we're going to chain one, and then you're going to single crochet into the next chain one space. Okay. So then we chain one, and we're gonna single crochet into the next chain one space. Repeat this process across the row. I'm getting close to the end of the row, and this is what it should be looking like. Our last single crochet of the row will go into the starting chain two space from the previous row. This can be a little bit hard to see, even for an experienced crocheter. So I encourage you to, once again, really use your hands to find the starting chain two space. Once you do, make your single crochet. And this concludes row two. So now we can go ahead and turn our work. And let's do this one more time together, and then we'll jump into color changes. 
So to start this row, once again, we're going to chain two and make a single crochet into the first chain space. Use your hand to really find those spaces so you kind of know where you're going before you start. So single crochet into the first chain space, chain one, single crochet into the next chain space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain space. And that's all moss stitch really is. One thing to keep in mind is that this stitch tends to tighten up as you go, likely from making the chains a little bit too tight. So make sure every now and then you relax, loosen up any tension in your hands you might have, and try to focus on making really even stitches and chains. And make sure that they're not too loose and not too tight. We're almost to the end of the row. Making our last chain one. And then you're gonna make your final single crochet into the starting chain two space from the previous row. Once again, use your hands if you can't see it. And make that single crochet. This concludes row three, but let's say you want the next row to have a new color. We're actually going to undo the last stitch from this row and we're gonna put our hook into the last chain we made from row three. Grab your new color and have it nearby. So now go into that starting chain two space from the previous row as if to make a single crochet. Draw up your loop, but don't yarn over just yet. Grab your new color and yarn over with your new color to complete the stitch. We're now ready to begin the next row in our new color. Turn your work and let's begin row four with a chain two. And actually, I wanna cut my old tail before moving on to the new color. So okay, I cut that, that's out of my way, and now we're ready to move on. And to save you a lot of time later on, I'm going to show you how to weave in your ends as you go. You don't have to do this, you can wait until the end to weave everything in later, but if you're making a blanket or a scarf with lots of stripes, I highly recommend this method. To do this, all we're going to do is crochet over our tails as we work the row. I like to always put all of my tails to one side of the work, so I suggest assigning a back and a front of your project right now. Because the moss stitch is reversible, it doesn't matter which side is which. Holding your tails to one side of your work, arrange them so that the new color tail is positioned towards the top and the old color is positioned towards the bottom just like this. I picked the side facing me to be the back of the work, so my tails are now facing me. And we're simply going to keep repeating the same process, but we'll be working over our tails as we go. So we're going to work as usual, but when we go into the chain spaces, make sure you're going under the tails and then proceeding to insert your hook into the chain space and work as you normally would. So as you can see, we're simply just crocheting over those tails. So we chain one, and we're gonna go into the next chain space. You might have to move your work around just so you can see the spaces. But we're crocheting around those tails and including them in our single crochet. And then chain one. And we're just repeating this process. You don't have to go across the entire row just until you feel like it, your tails are secure. And then on the next row, we'll secure them down even more. And I do wanna note that weaving in your ends this way will make your fabric a little bit stiffer, but the trade-off is that we don't have to weave in any ends at the end. And in something like a blanket, when you're using it, you won't even notice it. But maybe if you're making something like a garment, you might not like that stiff fabric. It's definitely going to be up to you and personal preference. 
So I think that looks good. I think that tail is weaved in nicely and I know I'm going to finish it off on the next row. So now I'm just going to finish out the row as I normally would and not worry about single crocheting over the remaining part of the tails. Row four is now complete and you can see the clean color change. We can now turn our work and begin row five. To start row five, we'll start with a chain two. We're going to work as usual until we meet back up with our weaved in tails. Okay, so we're almost there. Just one more stitch. Okay, chain one, and now we're at our tails. We're going to continue to work, but we're going to crochet these little tails into our stitch, just like we did before. And this is really going to lock in our tails so they don't come out later. So catch your tails as you make your single crochet into each of these stitches. You might have to peek at the back of the work to make sure you're catching them as you go. So we're just catching those tails that were already single crocheted from the previous row before. And as you can see, this is really locking those tails into place. Okay, so that completes row five. And now that those tails are completely weaved in, I'm going to go ahead and trim them. And that way, we know it's completely done. So as you can see, you cannot even tell that those tails were weaved in as we crocheted them. It looks really nice. The color change is really clean and I'm really happy with the way that this looks. So let's say we wanna change colors again. We're gonna pull out our last stitch and we're gonna begin our last crochet. Stop before completing the last single crochet and we're gonna yarn over with our new color. So let's grab it. Gonna yarn over with the new color, pull through to complete the stitch. And now we can turn our work and begin the next row. So once again, we're gonna start with a chain two. This is the side I wanted to be the back of my work, so this is the side I want my tails on. And we're just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to work moss stitch, but working over my tails as I go. I'm making sure that my hook goes under the tails before it goes into the chain one space from the previous row and I single crochet. Chain one and we're just doing the same thing. We're catching those tails as we make our single crochet. So we're just repeating the same process across the row. I'm almost to the end of the row and oops, it looks like I forgot to cut this tail. So I'm just gonna trim it a little bit right now and I'm gonna finish out this row. And once we do our next row of crocheting over the ends once again, then I will completely trim down my tails. I like to just wait to completely trim them until I know I've done two rows over them so I can keep track of them a little bit easier. And I think I actually wanna change colors again, so I'm not gonna complete that last single crochet. I'm going to do that last yarn over with a different color. So I grabbed my new color, and I'm doing my last yarn over to complete that single crochet. Now I'm ready to turn my work and chain two. So this time, the front of the work is facing me, so I want to hold my tails to the back of the work as I crochet over them. And we also have the tails from this color change as well as the tails from the previous row. So we're going to go ahead and just crochet over all of them. I'm dropping my new tails, but I'm finishing up on crocheting over the tails from the previous row. So I'm just working over those pink and purple tails. This is my second row of crocheting over them. So I'm just peeking at the back, making sure I'm catching everything I need to. 
And I'm almost done. Okay, now we're just gonna go into that last stitch and this last stitch can be a little bit tricky when you're trying to catch those tails. Well, it can be tricky anyway, but trying to catch the tails can be a little bit more tricky. Just do the best you can. And so now the pink and purple tails are completely weaved in, so I'm going to go ahead and cut those. And like I said, I like to wait and cut the tails down after I've done my two rows of weaving them in. It just helps me keep track of them a little bit easier. I'm going to do one final row over the purple and aqua tails just to get those weaved in. So I turned my work, I'm chaining two, and I'm just doing one more regular row of moss stitch, no color change here. Okay, so now I've reached my tails, and we're just doing more of the same. We're going over our tails as well as the stitch, and really locking them into place. So keep repeating this process to the end of the row. Okay, so those tails are completely done. They've been crocheted over twice, so we can cut them. So we've covered stripes, but now what if we want to make just a couple stitches in the middle of the row a contrasting color? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our row as normal, and we're going to crochet up until the stitch we want to change color. So we're going to go into the last stitch before the color change and stop before the yarn over to complete our single crochet, and we're going to yarn over with our new color. The front of the work is facing me this time, so I'm putting my tails to the back, and I'm going to work moss stitch for the next couple stitches and work over my tails as I go, making sure to crochet over the original color of the row. Let's do one more, and then we'll change back to my original color using the same technique. So we don't complete the single crochet. We're gonna grab our new color and we're gonna finish off that single crochet with the new color or the original color of the row. So now we're just gonna finish off the row with our original color. All right, so that's how it should look. We're gonna turn our work and we're gonna chain two. And now we're going to work in moss stitch and work over the tails as we have been. And because this is the back side of our work, it's a little bit easier for us to see our tails as we work. And once we get to the first contrast stitch on the back of our work, you'll notice that the stitch looks a little wonky. When you get to it, along with catching your tails, you'll want to find that right leg of the stitch and go through that little leg to bring it up. This will even out the stitch and as you can see, it looks a lot better. And now you're just gonna keep working as normal. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish out this row. All right, so I finished the row, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these tails. And there you have it, that's the moss stitch, and how to change colors and how to weave ends as you go. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, be sure to let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and would like to, be sure you subscribe so you never miss a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!